House and Senate Democrats torpedo a bipartisan coronavirus relief bill, raising an important question. If elected Democrats aren't taking the pandemic seriously, why should we? We will examine the political shenanigans and the light at the end of the economic tunnel. Then the mainstream media spread a story of a man dying from the drug touted by President Trump as a possible cure for coronavirus. The only problem with their story is it's completely false. We'll take a look at what really happened. All that and more. I'm Michael Knowles and this is The Michael Knowles Show. There is so much to get to today. We will almost certainly not have enough time, but we will try to fit it all in because there are a lot of political shenanigans going on behind the scenes. Before we get to that, I've got to thank our friends over at Tecovis. You know, whenever we get back to normal in this crazy world of ours, I can't wait to go out to bars and restaurants and places where other people are and show off my new Tecovis cowboy boots, which are handmade with high quality full grain leathers by world-class bootmakers. They are built to be comfortable right out of the box and for every occasion, at home, in the office, and out on the town. Tecovis are designed to be as fashionable 50 years from now as they are today. And Tecovis cuts out the middleman, sells directly to you at an honest price, so you get unbelievable quality that you can afford. I love these things. I mean, you can pull them off if you are out from the country or if you're a city slicker like me. Do what I did. Get yourself a pair of Tecovis cowboy boots today at tecovis.com slash Knowles, K-N-O-W-L-E-S. That's T-E-C-O-V-A-S dot com slash Knowles. Do it now. They are so comfortable. You don't even have to break them in. They wear great right out of the box and they look great too. Tecovis.com slash Knowles. All right, Democrats torpedoed the coronavirus relief bill. And there is so much spin and propaganda going on around this. But really, what the Democrats did is indefensible. Okay, it's, it, it goes beyond the usual level of partisan tit for that and tit for that, tit for that, and trying to get your own interests in there. They torpedoed the bill. Even the New York Times admitted it. So the first New York Times headline to report on this said, honestly, Democrats block action on $1.8 trillion stimulus because that's what happened. But that was a little too harsh on the Democrats, wasn't that? You can't, you're the New York Times, you're not allowed to do that. So the second headline read, quote, Democrats block action on stimulus plan seeking worker protections. So you see, so it's still admitting Democrats blocked it, but they're giving them more, more uh, coverage as to why they blocked it. Then the third headline, Partisan divide threatens deal on rescue bill. <laughs> like, no, it's not the partisan divide. It's the Democrats. You were right the first two times. <laughs> and really, you were right, right just the first time. So what did the Democrats block? What was so objectionable that the Democrats uh, didn't want to pass it? Paid sick leave for workers. That was in the bill. That's something usually Democrats are talking about more than Republicans are. So that shouldn't have been objectionable. Free coronavirus testing for everybody, including the un uninsured. Democrats were prattling on about that for weeks and weeks. Everyone's got to get a test. We Okay, fine. Good. Everyone gets a test. Checks of up to $1,200 for Americans making under $100,000 per year. That was Andrew Yang's entire campaign. Democrats have talked about a universal basic income now for at least a decade. And in some circles for a lot longer than that. Well, okay, now Americans are just getting direct checks from the government. They're upset about that. Funding for food assistance, specifically food assistance for low-income women and mothers with young children. You know, very often Democrats will say that Republican relief packages are, they're just geared for the rich. They're tax cuts for the rich. They're welfare for the rich, uh, which is virtually never true. But in this case, we're talking about low-income women and mothers with young children. That's a problem. Uh, it strengthens unemployment benefits. I thought the Democrats could get behind that. And then at the heart of the package is a $500 billion loan program, billion with a B, that would float businesses that are about to collapse. Now, you, you could imagine the Democrats objecting to that because they say, we don't want a half trillion dollars of corporate welfare, but it's not corporate welfare. It's a loan to keep the businesses around so the workers still have jobs. So they certainly should be able to get behind that. And as far as I'm concerned, the most objectionable part of the entire bill is that it costs $2 trillion, but 
But Democrats love that stuff. You know, they've proposed the $93 trillion Green New Deal. They proposed Liz Warren's $52 trillion healthcare plan. So $2 trillion, that's nothing. That's a drop in the bucket. And yet, the Democrats torpedoed it. This was negotiated in good faith, bipartisan, both sides of the aisle. And then at the last minute, the Democrats shot it down. Senate Republicans were furious. Mitch McConnell, Senate Majority Leader, lays out exactly what happened. We had a high level of bipartisanship in five different working groups over the last 48 hours, where members who were participating were reaching agreement. And then all of a sudden, the Democratic leader and the Speaker of the House shows up. And we're back to square one. So there was a high level of bipartisanship. This was not like most legislation where it's just written by one party entirely and then, and then passed. This really was a good faith effort. And then Schumer and Pelosi mess it all up. The big takeaway here for me is that Democrats aren't taking this very seriously. They sound like they're taking it seriously, right? They're saying the whole world is going to end basically if we don't completely lock down. Trump isn't doing enough. We need to nationalize the economy. They're actually suggesting that. We'll get to it in a second. We need a national lockdown. You hear that from left-wing celebrities out of Hollywood. And yet they can't even get one relief package through. They're talking a good game, but they're, they're not actually following through with it. Susan Collins, who is the classic Senate moderate, She's the one who's, you never know if she's going to vote with the Republicans or not. She's a squishy Republican from Maine. She was furious about this, talked about the unprecedented rancor in the Senate over something that should be so easy to pass through. Unbelievably, the Democratic leader objected to my even being able to speak this morning. Is that what we've come to? The Democratic leader objected to our convening at 9 o'clock this morning so that we could begin working in earnest. Is that what we've come to? The fact is we have been working on a bipartisan effort through task force with both Republicans and Democrats making very good progress and putting together a comprehensive package, the third package that we have dealt with. This one is to address and prevent the economic devastation that is being caused by this virus. We don't have another day. We don't have another day. This is a stimulus package because there is a government imposed economic shutdown. You don't have 18 months to negotiate this thing. If you negotiate this thing for 18 months, the economy is destroyed. The way you know that the Democrats overstepped here, other than the New York Times calling them out for it, albeit briefly, is that another Democrat called them out for it, Mitt Romney. (laughs) I guess he's nominally a Republican, but you know, the guy's pretty squishy. Even Mitt Romney was furious. He tweeted about this. He tweeted out, quote, nothing in the Senate has shocked me until today. Standing in the way of a critically needed rescue package is irresponsible and reckless. Dems say not enough money to states. Nearly $200 billion isn't chump change. Hospitals get at least 75 billion. So he's touting some of the advantages of this bill. Now, Romney expressed his dissatisfaction on Twitter because Romney is currently in isolation for possible exposure to the coronavirus, which in itself prompted a pretty funny Trump response. With the critical stimulus package vote expected. Romney's in isolation? Yes. Yes. Gee, that's too bad. Um, Go ahead. Uh, did I detect sarcasm there? No, sir? No, uh, none whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> no, no, none whatsoever. Trump? He would never be sarcastic. It's too bad. Uh, that's a very funny reaction. We all hope that Romney recovers very quickly. And then we hope that he continues to self-quarantine for another, I don't know, 20 or 25 years or so. Still, even Mitt Romney totally gets it on this point. But the best showing of the day came from Ted Cruz. We'll get to that in just one second. First, I've got to thank our friends over at Keeps. Listen, you know me, okay? I'm not exactly an Olympic athlete, all right? I'm not hulking Adonis of a man necessarily. One thing I've always had going for me with the ladies though, got a nice full head of hair. Two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. You think it starts way later than that. It doesn't. It starts early. But with today's advancements in science, 
Keeps offers proven treatments that can combat the symptoms of hair loss and help you keep the hair you have at half the cost of your local pharmacy. The key here is prevention. Keeps is up to 90% effective at reducing and stopping further hair loss. But the sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you're going to save. So you got to act fast. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash Knowles, K-N-O-W-L-E-S. You will receive your first month of treatment for free. That's my gift to you. You're welcome. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Knowles. Check it out right now. The sooner you get started, the sooner it will start helping you save your hair. Okay. The best reaction of the day, much better than Romney, much better than Susan Collins, better even than cocaine Mitch, was my good pal from Texas, Senator Ted Cruz. Famed quote from Rahm Emanuel, President Obama's chief of staff, never let a good crisis go to waste. Sadly, we're seeing the embodiment of that cynical approach right now. Because all the people out of jobs, the Democrats are using to push. What are they pushing for? Changing the emission standards on airplanes. Mr. President, what the hell do the emission standards on airplanes have to do with thousands of people dying and millions of people out of work in the coronavirus epidemic? Right, exactly. What is it? We'll get to what is exactly in the Democrats version of this bill, because it is hilarious. I mean, it is, it's much, I was going to say you could be in a Saturday Night Live sketch, but it's so much funnier than a Saturday Night Live sketch. We'll get to every one of those things. Ted Cruz's point here is exactly right. Okay. And this is validating all of us skeptics who have thought that maybe this pandemic is a little bit overhyped by the left and by the media because they're hyping it up. It's going to be the end of the world, but they're not taking it seriously when it comes to the bills which means they don't really believe that it's all that serious. Now, you might just say, oh, that's just politics. You know, this is always how politics works. Both sides are trying to get an advantage. They'll use any crisis to do it. Okay, I mean, I see the point in principle. The thing is, Republicans aren't actually doing that right now. Okay, and Cruz gets to that point next. Don't treat this bill like a partisan Christmas list. And by the way, you know, Republicans, we've got things we would like to advance to. Things I believe in deeply. You want to talk about what I'd like to do? I'd like to abolish the IRS. I've campaigned on that all over the country. I'm going to continue fighting for that. But, Mr. President, I'm not standing here with an amendment saying, as part of this emergency relief, let's abolish the IRS. There's a place for that political and policy discussion. The Democrats are pushing wind and solar tax credits. Mr. President, what in the hell does a windmill have to do with this crisis. Other than there's some Democratic lobbyists getting fat and rich. That's it. There are a lot of Democratic lobbyists getting fat and list stuffing this over 1,000 page Democratic alternative to the bill. I love that Cruz made this point here. It shows you his skill as a debater. It shows you his rhetorical skill. As he says, look, you're, you're going to pretend that this is just politics on both sides. Republicans have things that we want. Okay, I want to abolish the IRS. I want to cut taxes significantly. I want a stronger preservation of our culture. I want stronger social laws as well. I want to abolish abortion. I want to do all that kind of stuff. I'm not exploiting a pandemic relief bill to do it. Democrats, you are. So often what the left does in order to make their argument is they they just insinuate that you're as bad as they are, right? So that they don't ever have to rise up to a standard. They'll just drag you down where they are. But that is not what's happening here. This is not even. So what are Democrats trying to cram into this bill? Cruz got into some of it up there. Uh, The bill is 1,119 pages long. It focuses on the very important things during a pandemic. Pay equity. So pay equity. Pay, Pay equity is based on this incorrect premise that businesses are paying people much less money based on their race or sex or sexual preferences or whatever. Name the victim group. That's what they're paying them less money on. Now, of course, this doesn't make any sense because if if businesses could save 26% by only hiring women, do you know what businesses would do? They would only hire women. Do you really believe that businesses whose entire purpose is to maximize profits for their shareholders? Do you really think that they're so 
bigoted, they're so sexist or racist or this or that is that they would willingly give up 26%? No, nobody really believes that. Do you really think that uh, people based on their race could make, I don't know, I don't know whatever figure the Democrats are touting right now, but call it the same number, 75 cents on the dollar. Do you really think that if businesses could hire only black people and pay them 75 cents on the dollar, that they wouldn't just do that? Of course they would. But these statistics are all completely manipulated by the left. I mean, in the case of the so-called gender pay gap, it's been shown time and time again. When you remove differences of education, differences of experience, hours worked, the pay gap virtually disappears. So pay equity, that's an important thing during a pandemic. Corporate board diversity, who cares? Not me, but it's got to go in there, I guess. Mandatory early voting, so it's the federal government forcing the states to allow for early voting because it makes it a lot easier for Democrats to dig up all those corpses in Ohio and get them to the polls to vote for their candidates. Mandatory same day voter registration. Why have voter registration at all? We don't need it if you can do it same day. And if the federal government forces the states to do it same day, by the way, the states, the individual states are supposed to control voting. And yet in this case, major power grab by the left, a bailout for the post office. Okay. I get, the left loves the post office for some reason. Going to throw that bailout in there. Student loan bailout of $30,000 per borrower. No reason for that whatsoever. It's something they've talked about during the presidential campaign. They're trying to exploit the, this natural disaster for that purpose. Limit on deportations. They're, you know, It's amazing that we're locking down not only the borders, we're se- severely limiting air travel. We are locking people in their own apartments behind walls to keep out the the virus, but we're not going to deport foreign nationals who are in our country illegally. Great. Makes a lot of sense, right? Provisions enforcing sections of the Green New Deal. That's also in the Democrat bill. And then taxpayer handouts to abortionists. That's the Democrats' super serious bill. I, I told you what was in the Republicans' version of the bill. Well, actually the bipartisan version of the bill. It was stuff that, frankly, Democrats probably could get behind more than Republicans could. But bipartisan, pandemic, got to do it. This thing, it's a joke. They're not taking it seriously. And this gets to my main point today, my main takeaway from all of these shenanigans. This pandemic, by just the evidence presented by the left, has been overhyped. And it's time to start getting back to normal. So President Trump has called for putting partisan interests aside, getting the relief bill passed. Now Congress must demonstrate the same bipartisanship again and join together to pass the Senate bill as written and avoid playing any more partisan games. They have to get together and just stop with the partisan politics. And uh, I think that's happening. I got a call a little while ago. I guess they're getting closer. It should go quickly. And uh, it must go quickly. It's not really a choice. They don't have a choice. They have to make a deal. This should not be a time for political agendas, but rather one for focusing solely and squarely on the needs of the American people. We are going to save American workers, and we're going to save them quickly. Great. So that's Trump's priority. Just get the money back into the economy. Get the economy cooking a little bit again so it doesn't completely collapse. How's the left responding to that? They want to nationalize businesses. Even on this most basic level of the relief package, the left is trying to exploit this for a radical desire that they've had for over a hundred years. That is having the government take control of the businesses. Fortunately though, when they suggested that through a reporter at this White House briefing, President Trump smacked him down. When it comes to the Defense Production Act, we know that governors across the country all day today were pleading with you to, utif- to utilize the DPA, well, saying that they which, needed specifically for about. that allocation piece that you mentioned, Mr. Navarro. Okay. Why not use it now if that would answer their pleas for help? Well, we are using it now. The fact that I signed it, it's in effect. But, you know, we're a country not based on nationalizing our business. Uh, uh, call A person over in Venezuela, ask them, how did nationalization of their businesses work out? Not too well. Uh, The concept of nationalizing our business is not a good concept. It's not a good concept. Absolutely not. I just, I would like to apologize. I referred to that reporter as a him. It's actually uh, her. 
though perhaps now I'm assuming her gender and maybe that's a whole other problem. But his answer is exactly right here. Look at Venezuela if you want to look at nationalization. We are not going to that. Trump clearly has the right instincts here. And then the nice thing is he's able to articulate why. I'll tell you why. As Peter said, we may have to use it someplace along the chain, but we're getting calls. Here's the beauty of it. If we go out and we want, let's say, masks, we don't know who to call on masks, but Haynes, who makes things of cotton, various elements, lots of things, it's a great company, they called us and they said, we're going to make millions of masks. We got a call today from 3M. There's a big article today, the head of 3M. They're going to make tremendous products and they're more or less in that business. And if they're not, like, for instance, General Motors spoke to us, Ford spoke to us about doing uh, ventilators. Uh, the beauty is they're calling us. Uh, if you go the national route, nationalization route, we're going to tell a company to make a ventilator. They don't even know what a ventilator is. So has the Wu flu freak out gone too far? Cl Trump clearly articulating why we can't take these radical w new measures, why we can't go even further down this rabbit hole of shutdown and nationalization. On the one side, you've got Trump saying, maybe we got to get back to normal. Maybe we've got to try to, you know, obviously protect public health, but not totally implode our economy. On the other side, you have the left, which is extending the crisis, right? By not passing the stimulus package, they are extending the crisis by trying to fit in all this crazy economy destroying legislation in there. They are extending the crisis by suggesting that we nationalize industries. They're extending the crisis. So those are the two opinions. Do we start to lighten up a little bit here? You got Trump on that side, or do we double down, lock down the country, stop the economy, grind everything even further to a halt? That's what the left is saying. Fortunately, it's not just Trump on the side of saying maybe we need to get the economy going again. Dr. Fauci, the sainted Dr. Fauci, our public health dictator who tells us how to live. I'm, I'm really just mocking his position here. I think Dr. Fauci has actually done a very good job. And Dr. Fauci, even he is saying we can't completely lock down the economy. He says, quote, if you knock down the economy completely and disrupt infrastructure, you may be causing health issues. So it's not, it's not just that people are going to suffer health issues if we don't lock down. They might suffer health issues because we've locked down might suffer unintended consequences for people who need to be able to get to places and can't. If you lock down everything now, you're going to crash the whole society. So now on the maybe we need to lighten up, maybe we need to be more careful here, you've got Trump and you've got Dr. Fauci. On the other side, you've got Nancy Pelosi and the Dems. But it's not just Trump and Dr. Fauci on the side of maybe we need to lighten up. You even have, I kid you not, the New York Times. And who's writing in the New York Times? A Yale professor. So now you've got the public health representative, the expert. You've got the New York Times, which is the left-wing outlet. You've got a professor from Yale, which is a very left-wing school, all saying the same thing. The headline from the New York Times, written by David Katz, is our fight against coronavirus worse than the disease? That's Almost word for word what President Trump tweeted out a couple of days ago. And Katz makes this point. He, he shows that in war, you know, there are two kinds of military action. There is intense, you know, carpet bombing action. And then there is a surgical strike. Which way should we try to respond to the coronavirus? So far, we've been just carpet bombing the entire economy, forcing everybody to be locked down, shut down completely. No businesses are open, basically. And then the other alternative is what Dr. Katz proposes, herd immunity. You tell people who are very at risk to stay home. The rest of the people take precautions, but go about their business. Then maybe people get the virus, but statistically, they're very unlikely to have bad reaction to it or death, God forbid, and then they're immune, then it's much more difficult for them to pass it along. And then we just move on as we do with every other kind of virus. Trump, Fauci, the New York Times, Yale professor, very disparate group. You might call it bipartisan. 
on the side of let's move on. And you've got Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer saying, keep this all shut down. Let's drag out this misery as long as we can. There is ample evidence all around us that this has gone too far. And by the way, we may have found a cure. We'll get to that in a second. There's a very promising cure and the media are lying through their teeth about it. We'll get to that. First, if you haven't had a chance to see some of our new content called All Access Live, you should head over to dailywire.com and check it out. Jeremy and Ben kicked it off last week. Then we all did live streams each day over at dailywire.com. I've done two of them now. We will continue all of this week at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. It's a relaxed show. It's very easy. It's like a webcam and we're hanging out. This is not a highly produced news show. We are just going to be there with you while you are totally quarantined. The show is intended for all access members, but for a limited time, we've opened it up to all of our members. So let us know what you think of it. If you're around at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific tonight, join us on the all access live show over at dailywire.com. We got a whole lot more to get to, so don't go anywhere. We may have found a cure for the coronavirus. We don't know. It hasn't been clinically tested. It is not approved by the FDA, but it looks like an anti-malaria drug called hydroxychloroquine. It's hard to pronounce that one. President Trump struggled with pronouncing it at the press conference the other day. Hydroxychloroquine is showing a lot of promise for treating the coronavirus. Now, the media don't want you to know that. So, why do we think that this is showing promise? Well, just anecdotally, it has. There's a 52-year-old man who got the coronavirus. He spent days in the ICU. He could, couldn't breathe on his own. He was struggling. He thought that he was on death's door. He actually called friends and family and said goodbye to them because he thought that he wouldn't make it until the next morning. Then a friend of his mentioned hydroxychloroquine. Okay. He spoke to the doctors. The doctors said, this hasn't been tested yet, but he said, please, this is my last chance. Within a half an hour, he gets the drug. He has a very intense reaction to the drug. The next morning, he felt totally fine. So President Trump has talked about this. Now, the mainstream media are running this narrative that people are self-medicating with hydroxychloroquine and dying as a result of it. This from N- NBC News. NBC tweets out, Arizona man dies after ingesting chloroquine in an attempt to prevent coronavirus. There are no drugs approved to try to prevent or treat the new coronavirus. Self-medicating to prevent the coronavirus can be dangerous and possibly deadly. Trouble is, that is a false news story. It's fake news. It's a lie. The man did not ingest this new medicine that they're touting as a possible treatment for coronavirus. Here's from the story itself. I'm not even giving you outside information. This is from the actual NBC News story. Quote, an Arizona man has died after ingesting chloroquine phosphate. So not chloroquine, not hydroxychloroquine, chloroquine phosphate, believing it would protect him from becoming infected with the coronavirus. The man's wife also ingested the substance and is under critical care. The toxic ingredient they consumed was not the medication form of chloroquine used to treat malaria in humans. Instead, it was an ingredient listed on a parasite treatment for fish. So it's not, it's not the same thing at all. It's actually a very different thing. I think President Trump, I think conservatives, I think we would all agree, don't ingest parasite treatments for fish. But the parasite treatment for fish is not the medicine that we're all talking about. The left is so desperate to prevent us from recovering. The left is so desperate to prevent us from returning to normal, both socially and economically, that they're just publishing lies in the press. They often publish lies in the press. But you'd think they would be able to rise above that kind of pettiness during a pandemic. Enough is enough. Okay? It is becoming increasingly clear that many forces on the left in this country do not want a solution to the problem. Many left-wing forces in this country seem to want the problem to get worse because it will give them a political advantage. This has gone too far. You want some evidence that this has gone too far? Look no further than Dane County, Wisconsin. Now, you know, 
At the federal level, President Trump has said 15 days to stop the virus. That's going to expire on March 30th, just about. We'll have to reassess then. But because we have a federal system, most of the response to this has not been at the federal level. Democrats can't even pass a stimulus package. Most of the response has been at the state and local level. So, you know, in very liberal states, California, New York, we are basically locked down, almost entirely locked down. Other states and localities, not so much. Dane, Wisconsin, Dane County, Wisconsin has put us all to shame because not only are they locking down and saying no groups of people and no private events and no religious services and no nothing, they've now put a, put a form on the internet where you can report your fellow citizens for participating in any of these activities. You can send in an anonymous report. So uh, it says online, this form may only be used to report mass gatherings as defined in the current order, right? This is the government order that are being held in Dane County. For mass gatherings outside of Dane County, please contact your local law enforcement. What are the types of mass gatherings? Restaurant, hotel, and bar. Okay. Movie theater. Okay. Private gathering. Okay. Gym fitness. Okay. And religious center. So now if you're in Dane County, Wisconsin, and you see a group of people going to worship God, you see a group of people holding a mass, having a church service, you can report them and they will be subject to penalties by the civil government. Cheeseheads, it is time to revolt. <laughs> okay, if you are living in Dane County, Wisconsin, you need to vote every single one of these people out of office. There needs to be unrest. I mean, this is outrageous. This is insane. You cannot comply with this. This, this actually is tyranny. You know, I'm, I'm loath to throw the T word around too much. I try to keep relatively calm when it comes to these political debates, but a form put out by your government to rat on fellow citizens for worshiping God. Give me a freaking break. These Politicians, every single one who signed off on this needs to be thrown out of office and never employed again. This is absolutely outrageous. We have taken this too far. And if, if Dane County, Wisconsin is just a preview of what the left wants to do in other counties, then we need to end this ASAP. Okay. We can protect public health. We can take precautions without giving up everything that matters to us in this country. Why is the left so willing to do this? As always, for answers to these questions of crazy leftism, we have to look to our wonderful superiors in Hollywood. So Idris Elba is the British actor. Idris Elba was just on Oprah explaining why he thinks the coronavirus is attacking poor planet Earth. Idris Elba just tested positive for coronavirus, so he had to Skype into Oprah's show. Idris Elba presents a religious view of why the coronavirus epidemic is taking place. And beneath all of that, perhaps there's a little bit of a financial motive too. Our world has been taking a kick in. You know, we've damaged our world. And, you know, it's no surprise that our world is reacting to the human race. There's no surprise that a virus has been created that is gonna slow us down and ultimately make us think differently about our world and ourselves. That's like a real, for me, that's a standout thing that's very obvious that this is almost like the world's cry out to like, hey, 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 you're kicking me, you know, and what you're doing is not good. So I'll get rid of you as any, any, any organism would do is try and get rid of an infection. And maybe this is it for the world. So. So it's very obvious to Idris Elba that the world is crying out and attacking us. It's very obvious to me that the world is not crying out and attacking us because the world is a rock. Idris Elba refers to the world as an organism. The world is not an organism. It is a rock. Organisms live on that rock. It is a rock. This is a very popular religion on the left. It's the religion of pantheism, to treat the physical world as though it were God. I mean, you see this all the time, especially in the environmentalist movement, but even in just the kind of vague hippie sentiments that they throw around, mother earth, that we've come from the earth, our mother, or 
you know, that the earth is crying out because we've attacked it and it's attacking us back. First of all, if the earth really is conscious and attacking us, then we better fight back hard against it, right? Let's drink those plastic water bottles. Let's use those plastic uh, straws. But of course, that's not what's happening at all. The earth is a rock. We are on it. And in this popular environmentalist religion, the left is worshiping the rock. And this religion ultimately is anti-human because it prioritizes rocks above all of us. That's the religious motive here. There is a, a more cynical motive, though, a more nefarious explanation, I think. Idris Elba is saying the reason we have coronavirus is because of this mystical period in which this mystical experience where we have thrown plastic straws into the ocean so the earth is giving us a SARS-like pandemic to kill us all off or something. That does, okay, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I think we have coronavirus because the Chinese government gave it to us. Seems pretty simple to me, right? The coronavirus appears somehow. We're not exactly sure how. Pretty close to the Wuhan Institute of Virology of all the cities in the world, of all the cities in China, shows up right near the place where they handle all of these highly contagious diseases and bioweapons. So it just shows up there. But look, let's say it's naturally occurring. Let's say it came from a bat, right? The Chinese government knows about this on November 17th. They don't tell the world until the end of December. If China had reacted one week earlier, they could have reduced the spread by 66%. Two weeks earlier, they could have reduced it by 86%. Three weeks earlier, they could have reduced it by 95%. But they didn't do it. So the Chinese communist government gave us this disease. Why is Idris Elba trying to blame it on some weird pantheistic voodoo rather than the obvious culprit, which is communist China? Perhaps it is because the Chinese government is funding so much of Hollywood. You know, I, I spoke to some friends of mine who are pretty high up in Hollywood, who have worked in Hollywood for a long time, who've been in very, very top rooms and very big movies. And they backed me up on this. They actually took me a little bit further. They told me details that I, I simply didn't realize. China owns so many of our theaters. They invest so heavily in many of our big stars. They've invested in Idris Elba. They've invested, in, but it's not just Idris Elba. It's all of Hollywood they've invested in. And so Hollywood is loath to bite the hand that feeds them. You remember the NBA had this controversy just a few months ago. One guy in the NBA sees fit to defend the Hong Kong protesters. The whole NBA has to shut him down. Why? Because the NBA, as part of Hollywood, as part of our entertainment culture, relies on Chinese audiences. Not a great situation to be in. It's, it's just so cynical. I mean, I like to hope that the left has these kind of crazy I idealist motivations as well, like Idris Elba's pantheistic religion. But there would seem to be a certain cynicism to all of it, to Chuck and Nancy shutting down the relief bill, to the mainstream media totally carrying water for China, totally misrepresenting the cure, to Hollywood doing basically the same thing. At the very least, what we have to take away from all of that is if our friends over on the left are not taking this seriously, if the alarmists are not taking this seriously, if the very people telling us we need to shut down our economy for nine months or 18 months are not taking this seriously, why the hell should we? From the campaign trail, we also have to ask another question. Where is Joe Biden. Have you seen Joe Biden? Do you know where Joe Biden's gone? I don't know where Joe Biden's gone. You know, I, I do think the coronavirus needs to be taken seriously, right? I, I don't think it needs to be taken seriously in the way the left says it does, which means we need to shut down the global economy. But we should take precautions, try not to get sick. If you're at risk, you should stay home, quarantine yourself, wash your hands a lot. All the stuff that's totally common sense. I guess Joe Biden is doing that because he's not on the campaign trail. He's in a very at-risk group. So Joe Biden is now trying to film campaign messages from his living room. It looks absolutely hilarious. And the saddest part of all of it is he seems to have even less energy, even less focus while he's campaigning without any other distractions than he did a few weeks ago. Up the number of responders dealing with the crush, these crush of cases. And, uh, and in addition to that, uh, in addition to that, we have to uh, make sure that we uh, we are in a position that we are. Well, let me let me go to the second thing. I've spoken enough of that. 
The president must use the Defense Production Act. This is so embarrassing. I'll cut it there because you don't, nobody needs to see that. He's losing his train of thought. This has been another advantage for the left of the whole coronavirus epidemic is nobody's talking about Joe Biden anymore. Joe Biden basically clinches the nomination and then he disappears from the campaign trail because we're all focused on something else. Look, if Joe Biden could count on this kind of distraction until November, it's his best chance of winning the presidency. This guy is not fit to be the president. Okay. I don't think he was ever fit to be the president, but he sure ain't now. And uh, his best chance is to run a front porch campaign, to never leave his, his home and hope that he just wins because of the chaos of, from coronavirus and in the economy that people will blame President Trump for. We should not allow them to take that much uh, attention off of Joe Biden. Now, some other people are trying to come out as much they can during the coronavirus epidemic and give us all advice. So while Joe Biden is trying to hide Our Hollywood celebrities are trying to come forward. I couldn't finish the show today without this inspiring message from Hollywood, specifically from Madonna, who is uh, taking a a bubble bath with rose petals all around her, telling us how to be safe in the virus. That's the thing about COVID-19. It doesn't care about how rich you are, how famous you are, how funny you are how smart you are, where you live, how old you are. Hold on a second. Hold on right there. I'd just like to correct Madonna. It very much does care how old you are. If you are over 80 or over 70, you are at much greater risk than if you are 20 or 30 or under nine or 10 years old. So uh, that's not true. Also, it does care about where you live. If you live in Wuhan or or Milan, you're much more likely to get it than if you live in Fiji. Uh, Anyway, she goes on. What amazing stories you can tell. It's the great equalizer. And what's terrible about it is what's great about it. What's terrible about it is it's made us all equal in many ways. And what's wonderful about it is that it's made us all equal in many ways. <laughs> like I used to say, at the end of human nature, I mean, like, we're all in the same boat. And if the ship goes down, we're all going down together. We're all in the same boat. Now, inside of that boat, some of us are in beautiful bathtubs with rose petals all around us in our zillion dollar mansions. But we're all in the same boat together. Okay. That Madonna video, which is getting a lot of ridicule, obviously, that Madonna video is at least as serious as Nancy Pelosi's coronavirus bill. So like we're going to attack Madonna. That's fine. Madonna's response is no more frivolous than any other response we've seen from the left. Before we go, I have to get to it. This came out, I think last Friday, but I I just don't want to miss it. It's the real It's the real cherry on top of the Hollywood media, Congressional Democrat Frivolity Sunday. And that is the Imagine video. There's a video going around of Hollywood stars all in quarantine filming themselves singing Imagine, that awful John Lennon ditty and hymn to communism. They're singing it each together to get us through the pandemic. Take it away. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. Stop it right there. These people are professional entertainers. They could not even keep the same key for nine seconds. They could not. We're only listening to two people sing and they get the key wrong within nine seconds. Come on, man. A high high school choir could keep the same key. They, They go on. No hell below us. Above us on the sky, imagine all the people living for today. So one question I have here is who half of these people are. I don't quite, I mean, I recognize Sarah Silverman there at the end. Half of these people though, like there's some kid with long hair and he's in a white hoodie. I have no idea who that guy is. I'm not saying I have the biggest podcast in the world, but damn it, I should have been invited to do this video. Then they finish it all off. 
It isn't hard to do. Nothing to kill or die for. And no religion to imagine all the people living for today. Okay, I can't take any more, obviously. This video is much much more sickening than the Wuhan virus ever has been. If this is our response, we need to stop that response immediately. I love, by the way, that Hollywood's first, first reaction to a virus that comes from communist China and that is only spread because of that communist government is to sing an ode to communism, which is what Imagine is. Perfect. Just that level of obliviousness that we have come to expect from our entertainers. That, that's the response though. I, I bring it up not just to make fun of a bunch of Hollywood people. I bring it up, I bring up Madonna's video not just to make fun of Madonna. It's all of a piece. The Hollywood response, the mainstream news response, the congressional Democrat response, it's all of a piece. It's all unserious. So maybe it's time to take the serious people more seriously. Serious people including the president of the United States, the chief public health expert during this, Dr. Fauci, even a piece in the New York Times written by a professor from a very liberal academic institution. Maybe we need to take a harder look at that side of it. The people calling for alarm and shutdown are singing crazy ditties and bathing in tubs full of rose petals and lying about the medicine that might be able to stop the virus. The people who are saying, maybe we need to move on. They seem a little bit more serious to me. That's our show. Come on back tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm Michael Knowles. This is The Michael Knowles Show. The Michael Knowles Show is produced by Ben Davies and directed by Mike Joyner. Executive producer, Jeremy Boring. Supervising producers, Mathis Glover and Robert Sterling. Technical producer, Austin Stevens. Assistant director, Pavel Widowski. Editor and associate producer, Danny D'Amico. Audio mixer, Robin Fenderson. Hair and makeup, Nika Geneva. Production assistant, Ryan Love. The Michael Knowles Show is a Daily Wire production. Copyright Daily Wire 2020. Hey everybody, it's Andrew Claven, host of The Andrew Claven Show. You know, some people are depressed because the American Republic is collapsing, the end of days is approaching, and the moon has turned to blood. But on The Andrew Claven Show, that's where the fun just gets started. So come on over to The Andrew Claven Show and laugh your way through the apocalypse with me, Andrew Claven. <laughs>